This is the Project Management Podcast. We bring project management topics to beginners and experts. Find us on the web at www.thepmpodcast.com or send your emails to pmpodcast at gmail.com. Hello and welcome to episode number 67. I am Cornelius Fichtner. This is the Project Management Podcast for the 21st of April 2007. As a project manager, you're going to have to be many things. You'll have to be a great communicator, a leader, a visionary. You have to be able to both build and inspire your team. That's to name just a few. First and foremost, however, you have to be proactive. You employ strategies to plan the future in order to, well, proactively minimize risk on your project so that you can deliver on time and on budget. So why then is it that when November comes around, you can hear a collective groan rise from the community of project management professionals around the world when they ask how they could very, very quickly get 20, 30 or even 40 more PDUs before the year is through so that they can keep their credential going. Now, I was wondering, is this simply a case of the cobbler's children having no shoes? And I came to the conclusion, no, it isn't. I think that this is an acute case of PMPs not proactively trying to understand the PMI's recertification requirements. And as we publish this episode here on the Project Management Podcast, it is about seven months before the end of the year. And we want to help you today to understand these PMP recertification processes and how you can very easily gain those PDUs before the end of the year. But first, we have a few announcements, followed by our helpful and unhelpful resources, and then we'll get into these PMP recertification processes. First announcement is that we now have a donations button on the right-hand side of every page on the website. If you feel that the Project Management Podcast is helpful to you, then we would appreciate your donation. We want to upgrade our recording equipment and your donation is going towards that. You can either pay via your PayPal account or any major credit card is accepted. And next, we have a contribution from a listener. This is Rich Maltzman, coming to you from near beautiful and historic Boston, Massachusetts. My co-author, Ranjit Biswas, and I would like to invite you to be part of an experiment in collaborative writing. You see, Ranjit and I are writing a book called The Fiddler on the Project, and since a piece of this book will discuss the increasingly collaborative nature of PM, we felt that the most accurate and intimate way to cover this would be to open the book itself up for editing and collaboration. To that end, we've established a wiki, a collaborative workspace, online, and invite you to go there, read about the book project, fill out an amusing but informative survey, and go right ahead and collaborate with us on the book. Anything from a comment to a concept to a chunk of text you think that makes sense, given the theme of book you'll see described there. The wiki is located at http colon slash slash fiddleronthaproject.bluewiki.com. There's no E in blue. I trust that Cornelius will do his usual yeoman job of putting this in the helpful resources section of his website as well. Thanks for your time, and please involve yourself in this experiment. Help build tradition. And yes, Rich is absolutely right. You can find the link to the Fiddler on the Project Wiki in the helpful resources section of today's episode, which is episode 67. And as you are visiting the website, why not leave a comment on today's episodes? Comments are now open to registered users. Register and become part of the community. Let your voice be heard. And if you've previously registered, it may have been possible that you did not get a registration email. If that has happened to you, please write to me and I will personally activate your account. These problems should now be resolved. And that's it for our announcements. 
Today's episode is sponsored by the Project Management Prepcast, which is our sister podcast for all those among you who would like to become PMP certified. And we have a new and much cleaner website design as well. In this podcast, we will systematically acquaint you with the concepts, methods, tools and techniques that you'll need in order to feel ready to take the PMP exam. And because it's a podcast, it's easy to manage for you and you can prepare for the exam whenever and wherever you can put in your headphones. At home, at work, in your car, on a bicycle, you name it. And until the end of April 2007, a one-year subscription will cost you just $24.99. Our helpful resources are, of course, all about your PMP credential and what you have to do in order to gain those PDUs. The first one is the official CCR handbook from the PMI. That is the Continuing Certification Requirements Program Handbook, the CCR Handbook. And we'll be looking at the details from within this handbook in the main section of today's show. But if you would like to find the link to the PDF document, go to the helpful resources section. It's right there. The PMI has more than just the handbook online. They have a CCR overview as well. And you can find the link to that as well. Um, it has various uh, subsections, uh, guidelines, qualifying activities, um, how to claim and view your PDUs because you can do this online, as well as a small section on CCR tips on how to maintain your certification. And finally, in the helpful resources section, we want to remind you that listening to the Project Management Podcast is good for PDUs. You can gain up to 15 PDUs by simply listening to this podcast. And now moving on with the unhelpful resources, which is, of course, the list of podcasts that I personally listen to that have nothing to do, usually, with project management. And the topic today is German news. I am originally from Switzerland, so it won't come as a surprise to you that I listen to podcasts news from Switzerland. I, when I drive to work, I listen to the main news of the day, which is actually produced at 12.30 in Switzerland, but I usually listen to it around 6 a.m. here in the morning because we have a nine-hour difference. Works perfect for me. And this is the Rendezvous Swiss Radio podcast of the news. Um, yeah, keeps me up to date of what's happening back home. Another one that I listen to is the SWR 3 Top Thema. SWR 3 is one of the main radio stations in Germany that I always listen to when I lived in Switzerland. And the Top Thema, the main theme, the main news of the day, is a four to five minute in-depth analysis of a big news item of the day. As I was looking for the links of both the Rendezvous and the SVR 3 top thema, I noticed that SVR 3 is not very helpful when they give you the links. Uh, on their website, there is no way that you can actually subscribe to their podcasts. You have to go to iTunes. And as I was looking through iTunes, I found another one of theirs. And it's the SVR 3 Wie war dein Tag, Liebling? How was your day, darling? It is a comedy podcast with Christian Tees and Anke Engelke. I haven't listened to this one yet, so I can't really tell you what it's all about, but I subscribed to it, and I just have to say this one here. Danke, Anke. You won't get the joke if you're not from Germany, obviously, but I can now hear all my German listeners either groan or chuckle. And that's it for our helpful and our unhelpful resources. You can find these recommendations, as always, in the helpful resources section at thepmpodcast.com, and they are nicely categorized. 
And now let us head right into the main topic of today, which is the PMI's PDU secrets. Once you become a PMP, that's not it. Unlike my driver's license for Switzerland, which is valid for the rest of my life, the PMP credential is only valid for three years at a time. And then I have to recertify that credential. And if you're a PMP, you're going to have to recertify as well. But no worries, you don't have to take another test. What you're going to have to be doing is you're going to have to show that you have gained 60 PDUs in that three year cycle. Now, the question may come up, why does the PMI require us to recertify every three years? Some people say, well, they just want to make money of us, but that is actually not the main goal. Personally, I would say that the main goal is that the PMI wants to make sure that the global recognition and value of the PMP certification is kept at a very high high standard. If you just give the PMP out and then you don't have to do anything to maintain it, well, it kind of fades away. But if you continuously have to show that you're part of the profession and that you're gaining those 60 PDUs, that means a lot because it's not all that easy. They also want to ensure that the ongoing professional development of you and me is enhanced. They want us to continue to learn and share about project management. And at the same time, they want to encourage learning opportunities. In that way, they encourage companies, training companies out there to put out project management specific training courses. Okay, so what's a PDU? Simply put, a PDU, one PDU, is one hour of project management related training. As you will just see in a second, it's not only training, because the CCR program organizes the PDUs into five categories, and they are described in the CCR handbook. Let me give you an overview of those. Category one is formal academic education. Category two is professional activities and self-directed learning. Category three are PMI registered education providers and PMI components. Category four are other providers and category five are volunteer services to either professional organizations or community organizations. We'll look at those in detail in a moment. But as you can see, it's not just training. There are other ways for you to gain PDUs as well. But training is usually the number one focus that PMPs look at. And that's what we mean by PMI's PDU secrets. We will reveal all the ways that you can gain PDUs. When you're gaining PDUs, there is not really a minimum that you have to do. You don't have to have, you know, at least one per category. No, you can have all of them in category one. However, there are two restrictions. And the first restriction is that you can have a maximum of 15 PDUs for self-directed learning, which is like studying books. We'll get into that. And you can have a maximum of 20 PDUs for the category five, which is these volunteer services. But let's take a quick step back and look at how you actually report the PDUs once you gain them. Very simple. You go to the PMI website, you log in with your credentials and you get a form. And in this form, you fill in all the information about the particular activity for which you are claiming PDUs. It's really easy. However, it can take up to three weeks because each submission is obviously reviewed by the PMI. There is more than just a review that the PMI does. If you are unlucky, you may be asked to prove that what you have submitted is actually true because the PMI does audit a certain percentage of the submissions that they receive. 
My tip for you here is keep everything in a folder. If you go to a PMI dinner meeting, they give you a little slip that says you have attended. Keep those slips. Keep all the information that you have about the activities, about the classes that you have visited. Put them in a folder somewhere just in case that you should get audited. Now let's take a brief look at the actual cycle of your recertification. If you are a newly minted PMP, then this is what happens. Let's take me as an example. I took my test in April of 2004. That was good because the cycle begins on January 1st of the next year. That means from April to December, I got it for free, basically. And then on January of the next year, I had three years until I have to recertify, which means at the end of this year, December 31st, I have to have gained 60 PDUs. And from then on forward, it's three years to my next 60 PDUs and again, three years to my next 60 PDUs. It's really that simple. And now let's look at each of those five categories for which you can gain PDUs in detail. And we are not starting out with category one, but we are starting out with category 2H because that is a real secret and only very few people know about this one. 2H is very simple. Are you a project manager? Are you employed as a project manager by your company? Do you have the title project manager or project coordinator, project expediter, program manager, something like that? So if that is in fact the case and you work more than 1500 hours on a project per year, you can get PDUs just for that. To be precise, you can get five PDUs for each 12 months that you are employed as a project manager and you work a minimum of 1500 project hours. So any project manager, any PMP, excuse me, who tells you that I have no PDUs, well, they really haven't understood this particular little secret here. Category 2H, if you are employed as a project manager, well, you've already got 15 PDUs right there. That's a quarter of what you need to have. But now let's start from the beginning. Let's go back to category one, which is the formal academic education. Yeah, this is really what what you would think it is from the title, formal academic education. If you are taking some kind of a course at a university, that counts towards your PDUs. But if you're, let's say you're taking an MBA program, not the complete MBA program counts. Only those courses that focus on project management counts. So if you have a course in, say, well, project management, then that particular course as part of your MBA will count towards your PDUs, towards your recertification. It's as simple as that. Next, we have category two. Category two is the professional activities and the self-directed learning. And we have already looked at 2H, but if we have 2H, that means we need to have 2A to 2G. And that is in fact correct. 2A and 2B are both about writing articles. 2A is writing articles in a refereed journal and 2B is writing articles for a non-refereed journal. 2A, that can give you 30 PDUs per article, and 2B, that'll give you 15 PDUs per article. So that's quite a quick way of getting good PDUs if you need them and if you can actually write for these journals. Category 2C is for all those of us who are speakers or teachers at a project management conference, symposium, or at a workshop. I myself, for instance, in a week, I will be teaching at the PMP workshop of my local project management chapter here, and that will give me 10 PDUs per activity. I've already done 
an earlier uh, workshop this year. I think it was in January, and I got 10 PDUs for that. I'm doing another one next week. I'm getting another 10 PDUs for that, and I'll be doing another one in September. So I'm getting another PDUs for that. A total of 30 PDUs in one year. So you see, if you're involved, if you really want to, you can gain an enormous amount of PDUs. All right, have you ever gone to your local PMI chapter dinner meeting? Well, they normally have a speaker right there, right? Well, the speaker gets PDUs. Isn't that great? A speaker at a chapter meeting will get five PDUs per activity. And my boss is really cashing in on this one because she has two or three presentations and she goes around to the PMI chapters in our area and presents each of those and gets five PDUs each time. Then we have 2E. 2E is quite similar to do D, but instead of a speaker, you're going to be part of a panel discussion. So if you're a member or the moderator of a project management related panel discussion, you can also gain five PDUs. And then there is the big one. This one will get you 40 PDUs in just one pop. But it's not as easy as it sounds because you're going to have to write a book on project management. Yes, 2F is for all those among you who are authors of project management books. And you can get 40 PDUs if you're the author or if you are a co-author of the book, you'll get 20 PDUs. And here's one that I didn't know of until today. Yes, there are PDU secrets that were even hidden from me. And that is 2G. 2G is for those among us who are developing a project management oriented learning program. And I am preparing the prep cast, of course. So I get 10 PDUs just for that. So if you are involved in a company who does teaching and you prepare and develop content for these structured project and program management learning programs, well, you're getting 10 PDUs just right there. And that's it. Almost for category two. We've looked at 2H and we've looked at 2A to 2G, but there is also 2SDL, which stands for self-directed learning. And this is where all of you listeners out there can gain up to 15 PDUs in the three years simply by listening to 66 episodes of the Project Management Podcast. Yes, if you didn't know it yet, listening to this podcast is an activity that counts towards PDUs. Let me read this to you here. Learning may include informal activities such as discussions or coaching sessions with colleagues, co-workers, clients or consultants. It may include articles, books, instructional manuals, videos, CD-ROMs or other material resources. And these other material resources, that is where the podcasts come in. We have worked with the PMI and the PMI, I believe it was in last October, has given us the green light to announce that listening to a podcast counts towards gaining PDUs. Now, it's not just every single podcast that is valued at one PDU. Uh, they didn't make it that easy. Here are the rules. You can only submit 15 of these Category 2 SDL PDUs for each certification cycle. So that means for every three years, you can only gain 15. And you can claim one of those PDUs for each hour that you listen to podcasts on a particular topic that relates back to the knowledge areas in the PMBOK guide. So... For instance, if you're listening to a podcast that is 30 minutes and it talks about risk management, then you're going to have to listen to another one who talks 30 minutes about risk management. 
The way that I explain it always to listeners who ask is very simple. If you're listening to all 66 episodes that we have published so far, minus the one from today, you're going to listen to about oh, 40 hours or so of project management related audio material. And 40 hours even if you combine it, you get down to 20 hours, is way more than the 15 hours that is required. So my recommendation to people is say that you're a subscriber to the Project Management Podcast and you listen regularly to these episodes. And in total, the outcome will be that you can gain 15 PDUs. The only request that I have to you is don't lie. Don't say that you've listened when you haven't listened. That's really all there is to it. We're all honest and we are doing this because we believe that the PMP is a valuable certification and we want to uphold it in the best way that we can. Okay, so that's the first two categories and we have three more to go. Category three being the PMI registered education providers as well as PMI components like your local PMI chapter. Well, PMI registered education providers, you can register to become a PMI rep with the PMI. And once you get that status, that means that all your project management related seminars that you put out there are able to give PDUs to the attendees and therefore it's very easy for you as a PMP you go to the website of a company who puts out a project management seminar you check whether or not they are a registered education provider they usually tell you they show the logo and at the end of the seminar you will get a little slip that says you've attended this seminar and it was worth two, three, five, seven, eight, ten, or however many hours you were there, each hour equals one PDU. That's as simple as it gets. And that, by the way, is the reason why every PMI chapter can give you one PDU for attending their dinner meeting, because PMI components automatically are recognized as PMI registered education providers. But what if you are participating in a project or program management seminar of a provider that is not a PMI rep? Well, no problem. Therefore, we have category four, which are other providers. Once again, each hour of training, formal training in a classroom situation by other providers counts as one PDU. But a good thing here is definitely you want to keep the certificates and maybe even the curriculum that you took of this particular course, just in case that you should get audited. And finally, we have category five, which is the one that I actually like best, which is volunteer services to professional or community organizations. I like this best personally because I think it's a very good thing for PMPs to get involved in their local chapter, not just to gain PDUs, but also to network and talk to other PMPs and learn more about the profession. So there are three things that you can do. You can either serve as an elected officer on the board of your local PMI chapter. You can serve as a volunteer um, with your local chapter. Or if you don't have a chapter in your area, you can work on projects that any other community or charitable group in your area puts up. So let's start out with the becoming an elected officer. I myself, I'm the president of the local chapter here. So for 12 months of participating in this, I will receive 10 PDUs. If you are a volunteer of your local chapter, 12 months of participation will give you five PDUs per calendar year. And if you look into the CCR handbook, you see that there is a very strange way of calculating these. And, you know, you have to have a minimum of six months for this and for that and the other. But simply put, volunteer for a whole year. It's much easier for everyone to calculate. So it's 10 for a board member and five for a volunteer. 
And finally, you can gain five PDUs if you are a project manager for a local group, either a community or a charitable group that has the need for you as a project manager. However, they have to be legally recognized as a not-for-profit organization. Okay, and there you have it, the PMI PDU secrets for you, all revealed right there. And I even learned something myself that I didn't know. I actually went ahead and I looked at my own chapter here. What are the offerings that we have and what are just the general opportunities that you get through the CCR handbook, like being a project manager, listening to podcasts, doing all those easy things, being a volunteer, going to chapter dinner meetings, etc. And I came up that between now and the end of the year 2007, if you attended every single thing that we offer, you can gain up to 108 PDUs. And I bet that in your chapter, it's probably going to be very, very similar. And that's it for today. Thank you very much for listening. A few weeks ago, we presented to you an episode of the Controlling Chaos podcast right here on this channel. And next week, if all goes well, you will be able to listen to episode four of the PM Lessons Learned podcast. You don't have to do anything, just wait and listen. And the reason why we do this is, of course, because we are still on a bi-weekly schedule. Our episodes come out at the moment every every two weeks, which means that we will be back with another episode of the Project Management Podcast in two weeks' time. As always, you can find us on the web at www.thepmpodcast.com. And if you are a PM who wants to become a PMP, you can visit us at pmprepcast.com. Please send your emails to pmpodcast at gmail.com. And when you write, Please tell me where in the world you're writing from. Always great to know where the listeners are writing in from. And finally, we have this. Never underestimate the ability of senior management to buy a bad idea and fail to recognize a good one. Until next time.